Okay, here I'm going to show how to convert from a cash basis to an accrual basis for our revenue and expenses. And what we're going to look at here are changes in our uh, operating assets and our changes in operating liabilities and how those changes affect our revenue and expenses. And then we're going to take the uh, revenue and expenses here and either add or subtract them from the cash received or the cash paid. And that result will give us the uh, cash to an accrual basis here for those revenue and expenses. And then they can be netted here as our net income adjustment. And that would be our cash to an accrual basis net income adjustment. All right, for the case here, our accounts payable increases by $15,000 for the year. We'd recognize an increase in our expense of $15,000 for the year. So we'd add this increase in our expense of $15,000 to the cash paid of $100,000. So we'd have an accrual basis for our expense here of $115,000. In the case where our accounts payable decreases by $25,000 for the year, that means we'd have a reduction in our expenses of $25,000. So we'd take this reduction of 25,000 in expenses and subtract that from the $100,000 of cash paid. So our expenses on the accrual basis would be $75,000. In the case where our unearned revenue increases by $6,000 for the year, it means that we would have had a reduction here in revenue of $6,000. Now comparing that to the $100,000 of cash received, less this reduction of $6,000 in inventory, our accrual basis for our revenue would be $94,000. Now looking at the case where our unearned revenue decreases here by $5,000, that means we would have reported an increase of $5,000 in our revenue. So comparing that to the cash received $100,000 plus this increase of $5,000 in revenue, our uh, revenue here on our accrual basis would be $105,000. Okay, where our accounts receivable increases by $50,000 for the year, we would recognize an increase in our revenue of $50,000 for the year. So we take this increase of revenue of $50,000 and add it to the cash that we received of $100,000. So our sales revenue on our accrual basis would be $150,000. Now looking at the case here where our accounts receivable decreases by $10,000 for the year, that means our revenue would have decreased by $10,000. So we subtract this reduction in revenue of $10,000 from the cash received of $100,000 and our sales revenue on our accrual basis here would be $90,000. Okay, here we're going to look at inventory or prepaid expenses. They'd be handled the same. So in the case here, we'd had a $20,000 increase in our inventory. That means we've had a reduction here of $20,000 in our expenses. So we would be subtracting that $20,000 reduction in our expenses from the $100,000 that a cash is paid. So we'd have $80,000 recognized here on our accrual basis for the cost of goods sold of that inventory. Now looking where we had a reduction here of $12,000 on our inventory, that means we'd had an increase in our expenses of $12,000. So what we do is we'd add that increase in expense of $12,000 to the $100,000 of cash paid. So we'd have $112,000 here for the cost of goods of inventory on the accrual basis. Okay, here I'm going to show you how to determine our revenue and expenses on an accrual basis simply by looking at the debit balance or credit balance in our cash account and also the debit or credit balances here in our operating assets or operating liabilities and what balancing entry we'd need to our revenue or our expenses to balance our balance sheet accounts here with our net income accounts over here. Okay, if our accounts payable had a credit balance here of $15,000 and our cash had a credit balance of $100,000, we need a balancing entry here to our accrued expense and we'd have to debit that for $115,000. Now if our accounts payable had a debit balance here of $25,000 and our cash account had a credit balance of $100,000, we'd need a balancing entry here to our accrued expenses and we'd have to debit that for $75,000. Okay, look at our unearned revenue where we'd have a $6,000 credit balance and a $100,000 debit balance here in our cash. We need a balancing entry here to our revenue of, on our accrual basis of $94,000.
Now looking here at our rev unearned revenue, we would have a debit balance of $5,000 and a debit balance here in our cash of $100,000. We need a balancing entry here into our accrued revenue account here of $105,000. Okay, looking at our accounts receivable, we have a debit balance here of $50,000 and a debit balance here in our cash account here of $100,000. We need a balancing entry here into our accrued sales revenue of $150,000. Now looking here, we have a credit balance here in our accounts receivable of $10,000 and a debit here in our cash of $100,000. We need a balancing entry here to our accrued sales revenue of $90,000. All right, looking at our inventory, where we'd have a debit balance here of $20,000 and a credit balance here in our cash account of $100,000, we'd need a balancing entry here as a debit to our cost of goods sold of inventory on the accrual ba basis here of $80,000. Now looking at our inventory, we had a credit balance here of $12,000 and our cash had a credit balance here of $100,000. We need that balancing entry to the, on the accrual basis for the cost of goods sold here of $112,000. Okay, to summarize, we're able to determine our revenue and expenses on an accrual basis simply by making a balancing entry here, either as a debit or credit. And that had to balance with what's sitting here in our cash account with either the change in our assets or the change in our liabilities.